Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel called Statistics from A to Z Confusing Concepts Clarified. These videos are based on content from my book of the same name which is published by Wiley. For more information on the book and these videos please visit statisticsfromatoz.com. This video, Regression Part 5, Simple Nonlinear, is the seventh in a playlist on regression. Three of these videos are identified here with the arrowhead type of bullet, simple linear regression, multiple linear regression, and simple nonlinear regression, which is the subject of this video. These are the three types of regression analysis covered in the book and these videos. A fourth type, multiple nonlinear, is beyond the scope of the book and these videos. See statisticsfromatoz.com slash videos for the latest status of my videos. As usual in the book and in these videos, we'll go quickly through a list of keys to understanding, or KTUs, to give you the overall picture on one page. And then we'll go into detailed explanations of each of the keys. For this video, there are four KTUs. The first key begins by stating that simple nonlinear regression fits a curve to nonlinear xy data. The y is a function of a single variable, y equals f of x. It goes on to say that depending on the shape of the data, there are several different types of curves resulting from several different kinds of functions. The second KTU says data shaped like exponential logarithmic and some other functions can be transformed so that simple linear regression can be used on them. The third key says if the data curve changes direction a polynomial curve can be fit. The fourth and final key to understanding says the usual regression cautions and restrictions apply. That is, analyze the residuals don't extrapolate, and a regression model cannot be validated with the data used to produce it. And here on one page are the four keys to understanding the concept of simple nonlinear regression. You may wish to pause the video at this point in order to read them all together. Okay, let's go back to the top and take a closer look at KTU number one. It starts out by saying simple nonlinear regression fits a curve to nonlinear xy data. The simple in simple nonlinear regression means there is only one x variable, the same as in simple linear. In both simple linear and simple nonlinear regression, y equals f of x. There is only one, one x. Here the word simple is the opposite of multiple. In multiple regression, linear or nonlinear, there are two or more x variables. So y equals f of x1, x2, dot, 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 xk. Multiple linear regression was covered in the regression part 4 uh, uh, video. Now back to nonlinear. Nonlinear means we try to fit a curve to the data as opposed to a line. In the book and in these videos we cover simple linear regression, multiple linear regression, and simple nonlinear regression. We do not cover multiple nonlinear regression in the book or the videos because it can be very complicated and is beyond the scope of the book and these videos. Even for simple nonlinear regression like we're covering here, the calculations can be involved. So it is advisable to use statistical software which automates them as opposed to trying to do them with spreadsheets alone. This video will illustrate the concepts without attempting to show all the underlying calculations which the software performs. KTU number one goes on to say, depending on the shape of the data, there are different types of curves resulting from different kinds of functions. The following are the most common types of functions, exponential, logarithmic, power, and polynomial. Exponential and logarithmic functions have rapid accelerations or decelerations in the slope. Power curves have a more gradual change. 
and polynomial functions can be used for more complex curves, as we'll see later. Key to understanding number two says, data shaped like exponential algorithmic and some other functions can be transformed so that simple linear regression can be used on them. It is much more difficult to fit a curve directly to data than to fit a line. So nonlinear regression makes use of mathematical transformations in order to use simple linear regression techniques on nonlinear data. Here is some data we'll use in our example. It consists of nine pairs of XY data. Here's the four-step procedure that accomplishes simple nonlinear regression. Most statistical software will do this for you. Step one, select a type of curve that approximates the shape of, shape of the data. Step two, transform the data to, to transformed data that will approximate a line. Step three, use simple linear regression to fit a line to the transformed data. And step four, reverse transform the fitted line to produce the formula for the fitted regression curve. We illustrate this step by step in the slides that follow. Step one is to select a type of curve that approximates the shape of the data. The table shows the values of the XY data points to which we want to fit a curve. At lower left is a scatter plot graph of that data. Next to it is a graph of a generic power curve for y equals 1 divided by x. y equals 1 over x is the same as y equals x to the power of negative 1, which is a power function. Step 2, transform the data. For each value of x, calculate a transformed value for y using the inverse of the function for the selective curve. Earlier we showed graphs of exponential and log logarithmic functions. These two types are inverses of each other. In our example with a power curve, y equals 1 over x, so algebraically x equals 1 over y. So we apply the transformation y equals 1 divided by y, that is a transformed y equals 1 divided by the original y. And the specific equation can be determined can be determined for solving for x algebraically. Step 3. Use simple linear regression to fit a line to the transformed data. On the left is a graph of the, the data in which the y value of each pair of xy data has been transformed. Since the transformed data is roughly in the shape of a straight line, we can use simple linear regression to give us the equation or formula for a straight line which fits the transformed data. In our example, that formula is, formula is y equals negative 0.847 plus 1.041 times x. This regression line is pictured in the plot to the right. It looks like a, a very good fit, and the statistics provided with the output of the linear regression analysis confirm this. They say that r squared equals 0 0.893, adjusted r squared equals 0 0.878, and the p-value is 0 0.0001. So this regression line is a good fit for the transformed data. Step four is to reverse transform the regression line to produce the formula for the fitted regression curve. To recap, the curve we selected in step one is y equals one over x. We transform it so that the transformed y equals one divided by the original y. So to reverse this transformation, y for the fitted regression curve equals one over y from the fitted regression line. In our example, y is divided by the quantity negative 0 0.847 plus 1.041x. In the table, we plug in x's from 2 to 10 into this formula. That gives the y values from the fitted curve. Now let's see how this looks on a graph. Here we show the original data in black and the fitted regression curve in gray. Now, one might been a, have been originally skeptical about the distortions that conceivably could be caused by transforming and reverse transforming 
but as we can see from this scatter plot, good results can be obtained. KTU number three says, if the data curve changes direction, a polynomial curve can be fit. A generic polynomial curve has an equation of the form shown here. Note that there is just one x variable, but it is raised to various powers, starting with the power of two, x squared. If there were only a power of one, the equation would be that of the straight line. Now the b's are coefficients, and the a is the intercept. A second degree, also known as second order, or quadratic polynomial, is of the form y equals b sub 2 <coughs> times x squared, <coughs> excuse me, plus b sub 1 times x plus a. For example, y equals 3x squared plus 7x plus 11. A second order polynomial has one change in direction. As x increases, y increases and then decreases, or y decreases first and then increases. In the example on the left, the direction changes from up to down. <clears throat> in the center graph, the direction changes from down to up. The third degree, otherwise known as third order or cubic polynomial, has an x cubed term and changes direction twice, like the one on the right. It changes from down to up and, and then back down again. Now simpler is better. It is usually not necessary to go beyond third, three degrees. Larger orders are harder to work with. Also, they may be too closely associated with the idiosyncrasies of the data provided in the particular sample, and so they may not be generally applicable to data in other samples from the same population or process. The fourth and final key to understanding tells us that the usual regression cautions and restrictions apply. First, analyze the residuals. This will be explained in a separate video, but briefly, residuals represent the error in the regression model, that is the variation of the variable y, which is not explained by the model. Residuals must be analyzed to ensure that this variation is not explainable by any other factors not included in the model. Second, as explained in the regression part three video, don't extrapolate your conclusions beyond the range of the data. This cartoon illustrates that danger. If we collected data on the results from zero to three pills, we cannot make any conclusions on the results from more than three pills. And third, a regression model cannot be validated with the data used to produce it. Use the discipline called design of experiments, or DOE, to design and conduct controlled experiments on the predictions from the model. DOE is a complex subject unto itself, and there is a three-part series of articles in the book on the subject, and I plan to do three videos on that content. Okay, that concludes our clarification of the concept of simple nonlinear regression. If you liked this video, please remember to press the thumbs up like button on your screen below. I'll be making more videos of some or most of the 60 plus concepts in the book if folks like you tell me more videos are wanted. Please subscribe to this channel to be notified when new videos are uploaded. Also, the website statisticsfromazz.com has a listing of available and planned videos. Now, videos like this one can be very helpful, but they're not very handy when you want to quickly look up something on the job while studying or during an open book exam. For that, nothing beats a book or an ebook. You can also learn about those on the website. I'd recommend following my blog at statisticsfromazz.com slash blog. I've got some things there that hopefully you'll find interesting, like a statistics tip series, as well as posts showing that you are not alone if you're confused by statistics. I'll also be posting on the Facebook page, Statistics from A to Z, and on Twitter as at Stats A to Z.